Hey class, I just wanted to touch on real quick tonight the IMG tag. Uh, this is probably the most often asked question during the HTML week, uh, and that is how do I get my uh, IMG tag to actually show pictures after I've uploaded my program uh, for my peers to download? Because often when they download it, they're not seeing the pictures that I'm seeing. And this is uh, usually the case uh, due to a lack of understanding exactly what's going on with the IMG tag. So I want to talk a little bit about it. Um, but basically, uh, the IMG tag, as you find in uh, W3Schools, basically has just a few attributes that it uses. One is the source attribute, and they have an alt attribute, and the height attributes and width attributes that you can use to manipulate the size of the actual image that you're displaying. The source attribute is probably the most important one and is probably what's being confused. I think the most important thing to remember about this source is that this source is actually a URL. Uh, you'll notice if we come down here to source, it says URL, specifies the URL of an image. and if you don't specify the HTTP colon slash slash blah 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 that you usually find in, in a URL, then it assumes that it's what's referred to as a um, a relative URL. So it is relative to the position of the HTML file. And so in this case, since there is no information telling uh, the browser where to look for smiley.gif, it assumes that it is in the same location uh, as the HTML file itself. So on your computers, when you're creating your HTML files, you've got your pictures all there right next to it, you're referencing them, everything looks great, but then you upload your HTML to your peers and they try to download it and those pictures are not available to their computer and so it doesn't work. So I'm going to show you real quick the best way to make it so that it doesn't matter who downloads your code, they'll be able to see the pictures that you want. And the best way to do that is to have a full URL uh, for the images that you're doing and that means your images need to be available somewhere on the internet um, and uh, there's a couple of very easy ways to do it and I'm gonna show you three different ways to do it tonight um, using uh, just basically any web page as well as a couple of uh, cloud provider uh, file hosting sites and pretty much most file or video or excuse me photo hosting websites have a way to do what I'm going to show you tonight but I'm just going to show you two tonight and if you have your pre your preferred one uh, you can do some research to find out how to do it there uh, the first and easiest uh, way to, to do this is to just find the picture somewhere on the web that is what one one that you like right and inside of Chrome you have this really cool option if you right click and it's an image you can save the image to your computer, you can copy the image URL, or you can open the image in a new tab. And the simplest way to check to see if an image is going to work for what you're trying to do, because some images won't. You notice if I click on this image up here, you don't see any of that stuff. But if you click on it and you have an option to say open it in a new tab, and you look at that new tab and you notice that there's nothing else there on the web page, it's just the image. Uh, you've got a .jpg up here, so your odds are that this is a good URL that takes you to this image right and you can use that inside of your code as the source and it'll work now you notice here I've pretty much just copied that IMG tag verbatim I've tweaked the width and height a little bit but if I take that URL paste it in here as the source it shows up right um, you can tweak the height a little bit to determine uh, you know to get the right size because you know your aspect ratio is important when you're looking at pictures and uh, that's it, right? You've got a web referenced picture um, that is embedded into your page. Like I said, embedded is, is not really embedded, it is referenced from within your page. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do this with a couple other services real quick and then we'll call it an evening. Um, so for example, OneDrive is um, one way to do it. Uh, you notice most of these uh, cloud file providers offer a public folder um, by default so you don't have to worry about trying to set up the permissions to make it publicly available because the fact that it is publicly available is critical for this to work right because if you have to authenticate to get to the picture then it's not going to work when somebody else tries to look at your HTML page and look at that image because they may not have permissions to see that picture so public folders are important and then depending on the web the tool you're in um, there's a couple different ways to do it. Inside of OneDrive, if you click on it, 
the picture, you have this option up here that says View Original. And that basically does the similar thing that we do inside of Chrome when we say um, Open Image a New Tab. It basically references it. And I bet you if we go to the end of this, we'll see the .jpg somewhere in here. And then you can just copy this just like you did before, right? And put it in as the source. And then you'll notice that that image shows up there. Once again, you'll need to tweak the width and height to match the aspect ratio of the picture that you are using. So that's how you do it from OneDrive. And then doing it from Dropbox is uh, similar. But you'll notice that once again, Dropbox has a public folder. I happen to have another subfolder in here from something I created several years back to, to do similar things to what I'm showing you here. Um, but uh, inside of Dropbox, if it, you're in your public folder, it's easy. It's as simple as right clicking, and there's a copy public link, right? And then you can grab that and bring that in as the source. Right, and there it is. Right, um, and just one last quick tip before we go: if you're trying to figure out what to do for the width and height to make the picture look right, um, you need to know the original dimensions of the picture that you're using. Right, and so in order, the best way to do that would be to download it to your local computer. Right, or if you already have it on your local computer, then it's really easy in Windows. You'd pretty much just hover over it. and it pops up and you notice there's a thing in there called it says dimensions this image is 800 by 533 um, this other image if I were to use it is 18 by 1200 and so you can play with the aspect ratio by simply you know if you want to cut the image in half you divide both of those by half and then you have your width and your height so uh, there you go there's a little tip on how to do the images inside of your code and I hope that's helpful